Let's take a look at the KISS principle. KISS has many meanings. Some refer to it as keep it simple stupid, some others keep it simple smart, or keep it simple straightforward. There is no standard way of referring to the KISS principle. However, most of the times developers read it as keep it simple stupid. KISS is not applied only in programming. Other engineering fields use this principle as well. You don't have to keep things simple just in programming. Try to apply this principle in your life as well. Keep things simple. Also, you can use this principle to flirt with the person that you like at work or college. You can go like, hey, let's kiss. <laughs> of course, you know the true meaning of kiss, but she or he doesn't, so that's a good way of flirting with the person that you like. Yeah, that's a good advice right there. Anyway, so what does KISS mean and is it easy to use KISS principle in your code? So first of all, using the KISS principle is hard. You need to be an experienced developer to apply this principle in your code. You have to fully understand object-oriented programming and everything that comes with it, such as classes, interfaces, inheritance, polymorphism, abstract classes, etc, etc. Until now, we have seen a lot of cases of bad and good code, and whenever we wrote bad code, we did not apply keys. However, whenever we were changing bad code to good code, then automatically we were applying the keys principle. As a result, applying keys is hard, you need programming experience, otherwise your code does not apply keys fully. It might apply it, but not fully. And the code, of course, it looks bad sometimes, sometimes it looks good, so yeah. Now, to answer the other question, what is the meaning of keys? Well, keys simply means that you follow best practices, design patterns, solid principles, in general, your code should be decoupled, and we already know what coupling means from the very first videos. So, an inexperienced developer that has no knowledge or has some knowledge of object-oriented programming might actually find it difficult to understand code that was written using the KISS principle. But in general, you should not care. You are not writing code for inexperienced developers, you write code for experienced developers that do have an understanding of object-oriented programming. So let's take a look at a JavaScript example this time. I will write some old JavaScript code and I will write the same example in ES6, which is the latest JavaScript version. Um, to be honest, it is not the latest JavaScript version. The latest one is ES7, but ES7 has just two, three new additions. So ES6 was a huge update for the JavaScript ecosystem, uh, though most of the times you will hear people referring to the latest JavaScript version as ES6 and not ES7. And I do the same. <laughs> so in the previous video, we have already seen how, actually in the previous videos, we have already seen how to apply KISS by using best practices in terms of object-oriented ori programming. In this example, I will show you how to apply keys by using the latest updates of the language, in this case JavaScript. So most of the times, new additions and changes in a language, in a programming language, are for a good reason. I am telling this because I have seen a lot of GitHub projects that still do not use all the good features that come with PHP 7 or projects that do not use the latest version in JavaScript. So let's take a look. I will use var to store an array, actually let me zoom in, okay, so this is, uh, I'm using JS Fiddle as my editor, so I will use var to store an array of artists, and each artist has a list of songs, okay, so let's take an example, var artists equals two, so here we have an array, and then I will have two artists, so one, Two. The first one, uh, so we have the songs, and songs are is an array of songs. So we have, let's say, I was there for you. The other one is you left me. And the last one, please come back. Okay, so you see that this artist is, yeah, he's very sad. It looks like the artist is very, very sad. So the other artist, though, 
I suspect the other artist is Taylor Swift because, well, let's take a look. Bye bye, old love. She doesn't care. Uh, I am over you. And back together? Nah. <laughs> okay, so these are the two artists. So the purpose of this uh, video is to, you know, is, is to use the latest JavaScript uh, changes. So in this one, so to start with, I will use the old JavaScript functions. Let's take a look at how we can do that. I'm going to take the artist's array and uh, I will loop through each artist, okay? Now, for functions though, I will use the standard functions in JavaScript, the old ones. So we have a function that takes an artist and then we can, first of all, let's console.log the artist just to take a look if we have everything correct. So if I, if I open my console and if I go to the run, you can see that it will print uh, two arrays, so one with the songs, with the first songs, these ones, and uh, the other songs for the second artist. Okay, so as you can see, we have a songs property here, so we can actually access that. So what I'm going to do is to have another function, so I will say artist, so we are accessing now this one, this artist here, and as you can see, an artist, an artist has songs, so artist.songs, and then for each again, and again, we have a function that now we have a song back, right? So we have a list of songs, so now we want each individual song. So what I'm going to do this time is to actually print the song. Okay, so if I clear this out, I go back here, run, as you can see, we get a list of all the songs, so that's cool. So this is how you can do it in the old way. So now we are going to take a look at how we can do this in in ES6. So I will comment this code. Okay. And let's take a look. So again, I want to access artists for each. So again, we loop through each artist. However, this time I will use the arrow function. So arrow functions is are, are a new addition to JavaScript. And as I, okay, so I will actually explain this later. So we have the artist and then we will say artist.songs and then for each artist, sorry, for each song this time, song error function console.log song. Okay, so what do you expect out of this code, out of this single line of code? What is, what, what is going to happen? So if I clear this out and I go and I run this, okay, first, first of all, we have a problem, we have an error, let's take a look. Uh, it must be a parenthesis. Yeah, so we need a parenthesis here. Okay, let's go back to the run. Excellent. As you can see, we get back the exact same result. However, there is a huge difference. Take a look at the code here in the using the old way and take a look at this code right here. This is using the ES6 uh, error functions. So arrow functions can make the code uh, more compact and more readable. Now, let's go back though. You might wondering how this line of code is simpler compared to this one. Well, as I said, you need to have programming experience. Someone that has never seen arrow functions, right? will find this single line of code very hard to read. Someone that already has experience with error functions will immediately understand this single line of code. So the last step is to just change var to let and that's all. As you can see, we went from five lines, so one, two, three, four, five, to just one line of code. The result, of course, is the same for both cases. And this is just a coincidence. Keys doesn't mean less code. Keys means simpler code and easier to read. And this, believe it or not, if you do have experience with the new JavaScript uh, version, this line of code is actually very, very simple and very easy to read. So this is 
keys. This is, I guess, yeah, this is keys. This is not keys anymore. 